Hello, today I'll be showing you how I install the hardware to my control box. In the previous two videos I showed you the software that I use and also how I actually constructed the control box. In this video we'll be installing the hardware, the wiring, and I'll show you the layout of all the components. So let's get started. The first thing I do is I draw a layout of all the components and, and their location inside the box. Try to get an idea of how everything's going to fit together and try to keep it neat and organized and also I'm trying to separate the components, the AC components from the DC components so I plan on dividing the box into two separate sections. The main piece of hardware in my system is going to be this relay board that has eight relays on it and this board is controlled by my laptop and this is going to get mounted in the center of the box. This relay board has four mounting holes and I'm going to use these nuts to keep it off the back of the box so that there's a small gap to allow air to flow around it and help keep this thing cool. Okay, I use a uh, board, a 1x8 board, and I mount that to the metal tube that uh, holds up the roof and then that is the platform that I mount the relay board to and this is in the dead center of the box. What I'm doing now is I'm checking to make sure that when the computer folds up inside the box it doesn't hit the relay board. I end up putting a little stop behind the monitor screen here and that helps make sure it doesn't hit the wires and hit the back of the board. The next thing I do is I run all the wires from the external components into the box. I use just a one inch PVC fitting and I run the wires into the side of the box here and then I will terminate them all the AC components on the white strip and all the DC components on the black strip. Next I need to run AC power into the box from the house and that's what this outlet is for. I use this tester to make sure that the load and the neutral and the ground are correct and I have a plug that plugs into that outlet that runs up to the top of the box and inside the box here this is where the I'll have two outlets that the grid ties plug into. I also check these outlets to make sure that they are wired correctly and as you can see I have one of the grid ties already mounted and plugged in and testing the outlets to make sure that they're wired correctly. At this point I want to give you a brief description of how I plan on operating the system. I plan on using grid tie inverters to offset the electrical usage of this system and then also a UPS to help maintain the power to the computer and the AC components without any kind of interruption. Um, what we're going to do though is I plan on modifying the UPS so that this will run longer than the 15-20 minutes that it's rated for. I plan on adding another battery to help lengthen the runtime on this UPS. But to do that effectively and to not damage the UPS, I plan on adding a little 12 volt fan to help keep this transformer cool. So what I'm going to do is modify this box, drill a small hole, and mount this fan in the top here. And in the bottom, there's vents and the air will be drawn up from the bottom around the transformer and then out the top. And this is how I installed the little 12 volt fan that I had. And I wire this to a plug and run it out the front of the box. Then what I do is I take the two wires that go to the battery and I solder on the same color two more wires and I'm going to run that out the front of the box. Here's the vents on the side of the UPS and here's the fan in its final position and I solder the connections and here are the, the wires coming out the front, the black and the red for the battery and then this connector for the fan. Okay, here's a list of all the components that are going to require electricity from my control box and I start with my large aquaponic system and these are the components for that and then I have a small 
aquaponic system and it has a couple of small components and then my laptop computer and the programs on it and then finally my solar tracker one of the more complicated parts of this construction was the solar tracker control and the reason being is that since it's a 12 volt motor and it has to reverse uh, to track both east and west I needed to be able to separate the negative and the positive from each switch and be able to reverse them so by what I did was I made this box and I'm going to install two double pull double throw relays and these relays will be controlled by the relays from the relay board but by using these double pull double throw relays I can actually switch the negative and the positive allowing me to change the direction of the motor for the tracker okay I have to get fresh air up to the top portion of this box and the way I do that is I drop this inch and a half PVC pipe down through the floor into the top portion of the four inch vent pipe that's in the bottom that holds up the bottom of the box and I do that so that it'll draw fresh air up from the bottom here through these vents and whatnot though those things are lighter than air and they'll collect at the top of the battery box so I seal this pipe in and that way it'll draw fresh air up through this four inch pipe and it'll be clean cool air the battery box is vented separately I use these two wooden blocks to help raise up the bottom of the UPS to clear the hole but also to allow for air to pass from underneath and all around the UPS and help keep it cool. I drill a couple of one inch holes at the top of the box and put a couple of pieces of PVC fittings inside and this allows the hot air to rise and escape out the top of the box. Okay now I'm going to show you the layout of all the components. I'm going to start down in the battery box and show you the two batteries that I have. One goes to the UPS to help extend its runtime, and the other one is for the solar tracker and the relay uh, box and that uh, that runs off the other battery. I fuse each one of those as soon as it comes out of the battery box. Each one of those is has a 30 amp fuse. This one goes up to the battery's connection box and this is where all the connections are made that run off to my 12 volt fish feeders and solar tracker. Everything is fused and uh, I have that going through this fuse block and I have the different fuses for the different uh, components, solar trackers, fish feeders, relay board. Then those are split off through the DC connections box here and that's where I make my connections that go up to my relays. This relay is a four pole double throw and it's an AC relay and this is how I switch my fan that cools off the UPS and I switch the grid tie uh, solar panels through my charge controller to charge the batteries so it'll actually switch those over uh, from the grid tie to start charging the batteries when I lose power and it's run through through the this fuse to house current so when it loses house power it'll actually switch these two items and cause them to work turn on this is the fuse that runs from the grid tie solar panels up to the top of the box and feeds the grid tie inverters. This is just a little fuse cover that I made out of some plastic and uh, labeled it so I could keep track of it. And above that is the solar charge controller and I use that with the small, I have two small solar panels and I run that through this and that keeps my battery topped off for the it's for the relay board and for the uh, tracker. I have the cable secure that goes to the computer, the LPT port, 
and it's secured to this bumper here which uh, helps when the computer monitor closes it hits this and keeps it from rubbing against the wires. Here's my two uh, relays for my solar tracker my solar tracker east and my solar tracker west these are the double throw double pole relays. Now this is the terminal strip for the AC components in the system and I run all white wires 16 gauge and that runs to the other side of the box where I fuse them and I have them split into these 5 amp fuses and they terminate into the box above here the AC connections box and from there they run to the AC side of the relay board and again I designate that with the colors white for AC and black for DC this is my grid tie connections box and that runs from the outlet from the house up to the top of the box again this is the fuse for the relay the AC relay and it needs to go through the grid tie house current that way it can detect when the uh, power actually is shut off this is my, uh, my other cord that goes to the UPS and that's what keeps that charged up and uh, running and when when I have power it runs the other components also the computer and the other AC components alright that's the overview of all the components of my box the interior and this is what it looks like on the outside all painted uh, you can see the grid tie here is working and supplying power to the house and then I just cut down the cover here the rain cover and um, have some velcro strips on the side and that's what uh, keeps the rain off of it and the sun off of it uh, when not in use and this is it uh, opening it up using it and it folds back into the box easily then I have these two quick latches on the side and then that allows me to get to the hardware on the inside of the box this makes it easy to be able to gain access to the box if I need to check fuses or check anything and I just put the cover back down velcro on the two sides and it's and it's good to go right now I'm having a little bit of problems with my water pump for my main aquaponic system it's pulling a lot more watts than it's supposed to be pulling I'm pulling about 80 almost 90 watts and it's supposed to be a 50 watt pump so I have to look at either probably replacing it because there's not a whole lot I can do to it but that's why my watt hours are up for the uh, during the daytime but um, everything else is working great and no problems as of right now so any comments or suggestions please uh, leave it in the comment section and uh, thanks for watching